Since I've covered most of the important characters from The Eminence in Shadow, there's still a few left to talk about like Claire Kageno, the sister of Sid Kageno and someone with a very unhealthy obsession towards her brother but jokes aside, she is actually one of the most important characters in the series as we'll soon see. As usual, I'll be covering her story and overall character along with her powers and abilities to get a sense of her strength. Now there'll definitely be spoilers so here's a spoiler warning just in case and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. So who exactly is Claire Kageno, the chronic brocon? Now starting from her childhood, she was born into the Kageno family, a household known for producing quality dark knights. And following the tradition of the Kageno household, children have to start training at the age of 6 and when Claire started her training, she showed tremendous talent, excelling in swordsmanship, magic and her studies, whereas for her brother, he was utterly unremarkable at everything. However, because Claire genuinely loves and cares about her brother, she always trained with him and was very strict towards him, wanting the best for him. And it was throughout her childhood that her love for Sid developed into a serious brother complex, Basically, Claire has always been reckless in nature and often got into dangerous situations but every time she was in danger, Sid was the one to save her without her knowledge. Like when she was 8, she and Sid went into the forest to hunt for the Scarface gang and they managed to find the bandits but she underestimated their strength. She was taken up by the bandits and had witnessed her beloved brother getting killed by them, not knowing that he was pretending and had actually defeated them himself. It was after she was saved that she realised her beloved brother almost died because of her weakness and it pretty much made her extremely overprotective of Sid. And another instance was when Claire turned 14, she started showing signs of demon possession and knew she would be dying soon, so she dedicated all her time to be with her brother, although unbeknownst to her, they had secretly cured her demon possession one day while they were doing stretches. But still, this experience serves as a reminder to Claire that her time with Sid was limited and it developed into an obsessive attachment towards him. It's actually possible that her brother complex manifested as a result of all these experiences and also, despite never knowing that her brother always protected or helped her, she always knew deep down that it was him. That's why she loves him for it and understood the potential he has, which as we all know, she was correct. Regardless, Claire eventually left home to attend the Midgar Royal Spousal Academy when she turned 15 but before she departed, she was kidnapped by the Cow de Diablos who wanted to learn about her demon possession and how it was suddenly cured. After her capture, she was questioned by Vikan Oba but when he mentioned Sid, her brother complex kicked in and she literally broke her own bones to escape so that she can kill the Viscount. This is a great example of not just her inhuman physical capabilities but the extremes that she is willing to go just for her brother. Nonetheless, Claire did eventually free herself again and this time she was able to escape, not knowing that it was Sid in his shadow persona along with the seven shadows that helped to defeat the Viscount's forces. She safely returned home and it took less than a day for injuries to recover and she left for the Midgar Academy, a good indicator of her high levels of resilience and strength. In any case, during her time at school, it seems that Sid ordered Shadow Garden to watch over Claire in case the cup targeted her again and apparently Zeta has secretly assigned a member from her own splinter faction as well which I'll go over later in the video. Essentially, the person's name is Nina and she infiltrated the school as a student, becoming classmates with Claire and was actually her best friend. Also, it seems that Claire is the only known person that is allowed to threaten and abuse Sid without attracting the wrath of the Seven Shadows. In fact, they really respect her but are sometimes envious of their sibling relationship. Now moving on, in her first to second year at school, she was always considered to be the second strongest behind only Iris Miga and Rose Orana in terms of swordsmanship. Although when it came to magical power, Claire likely surpasses both princesses because she did have a demon possession cured, which almost always results in a person getting immense levels of magical power like the Seven Shadows. Also, she definitely has better control of magic than both princesses because it was something she had learned from Sid when they were younger. So in her third year, her brother started attending the school as well and despite her countless attempts to spend time with Sid, he always avoids her in very hilarious fashion. That said, shortly after Sid enrolled, he was framed for the kidnapping of Alexia Mega, so Claire tried talking to Iris, hoping that she would be able to convince her that he was innocent. However, because Claire was in her brocon mode, she was being too hostile so the students and Rose were forced to restrain her but in the process, she manages to knock out a couple of students and even dislocated Rose's shoulder. Claire was eventually subdued and placed under house arrest but when Sid was cleared of all charges, she was freed as well. After the kidnapping, Claire participated in the tournament to be the school representative in the upcoming Bushin festival but she lost to Rose in the finals although when the princess was branded as a fugitive, Claire became her replacement. And later when the terrorists attacked the school, Claire was absent because all the third years were away for a study trip. After the terrorist attack was over, their school had to be closed down for repairs and Claire was excited to return home with Sid for summer break but sadly for her, Sid decided to visit the Holy Land on Limo instead despite promising her. 
That's why when the summer break ended, Claire went to find Sid again and this time he couldn't avoid her rage-filled tenacity and patience. She finally called him and threatened him for neglecting her but personally, this interaction was definitely funnier in the manga as compared to the anime. But after some compliments from Sid, she decided to forgive him and left a VIP ticket for the Bushin festival, wanting Sid to learn from the matches but mainly she just wanted him to watch her. When the tournament started, she made it to the semi-finals before it was stopped by the battle between Shadow, Iris and Beatrix around the capital. However, after the incident with Shadow, the tournament resumed and Claire became the champion by default because Iris withdrew and Monday Man was disqualified. That's why Claire forced Sid to celebrate her victory and also as an apology for not watching her matches. They had a special dinner at one of the fancy restaurants owned by the Mitsugoshi company and during dinner, she told Sid that they would be participating in a subjugation mission to hunt the vampire queen Elizabeth in the lawless city. They eventually made their way to the lawless city and while Claire was attending a meeting for the upcoming mission, Sid decided to run off on his own. And when the meeting ended, Claire was flustered and worried because she couldn't find Sid and the Blood Moon event was about to begin and vampires were starting to attack the inhabitants. It was during her search for Sid that she would meet Mary, a vampire hunter, and she told Claire that Sid was likely taken to the Crimson Tower to be sacrificed in the resurrection of the Vampire Queen. After hearing this, Claire agrees to help Mary to stop the resurrection and using a secret tunnel, they managed to enter the tower and once inside, they encountered Beta's team who was currently researching about demon possession and the Vampire Queen. So after a quick exchange between the two groups, Claire and Mary left to continue up the tower where they will encounter Juggernaut the Tyrant, one of the leaders in the lawless city. They were forced to fight him and initially Claire was doing fairly well but she was eventually overwhelmed by his sheer strength. Even with the additional help from Mary who was revealed to be a vampire, they couldn't defeat Juggernaut. But as usual, Sid in his shadow persona appears just in time to save his sister by simply kicking the brood away. And although this was her first time meeting Shadow, she almost figured out his identity just from his posture which was similar to Sid's. Nevertheless, with Juggernaut gone, they continued with their mission and had briefly shared their own origins with each other. And despite learning the truth about Elizabeth, Claire still wanted to save the Vampire Queen, really showing her protagonist side and she is surprisingly compassionate for someone so crass. Anyways, they eventually found Elizabeth's chambers and discovered the corpse of a young boy but when Claire realised it wasn't Sid, she simply tossed the body aside. Okay, forget what I said about her being compassionate. But jokes aside, she was suddenly pierced through the stomach by the newly resurrected Vampire Queen and was in critical condition. Luckily, Beta along with her team soon arrived to provide assistance but even with help from Juggernaut and Yukime, they failed to stop Elizabeth. But to their surprise, the injured Claire suddenly awakens and was now overpowering Elizabeth. Now there's a reason for this and to give some context, when Sid was in Limworm, we know that he destroyed the sanctuary to free the spirit of Aurora, the Wish of Calamity. And because of this, Aurora was grateful towards him so when Claire was in danger, she would possess Claire offering her help and even providing her with new powers. Thus Claire received a magic circle on her right hand and this allows her to access Aurora's powers and help her control her own latent powers as well. The best way I can describe her new powers is that basically Claire has a Kurama and Naruto type dynamic with Aurora and her new powers. So back to the fight, Claire was apparently being controlled by Aurora at the time and because she was the progenitor of Elizabeth, she easily overwhelmed the Vampire Queen but Claire's body wasn't strong enough so Aurora couldn't really release her full potential. However, she was able to buy enough time for Shadow to arrive and defeat Elizabeth. With that, the battle ended with Claire reuniting with Sid and she told him about her new powers and Sid thought it was just her Chunimbyo face so he was super supportive of her, not knowing that she has now become the host of Aurora. Now following the events of the Blood Moon incident, they returned to the Midgar Kingdom and Claire was absent throughout Volume 4 but it has implied that she was busy researching her new powers, the Witch of Calamity, the Demon Diablos and Shadow Garden. Also it seems that Sid broke another promise to Claire during Winter Break because she was transported to Japan. In any case, moving on to Volume 5 of the Light Novel, we learn that students have been going missing around the Midgar Academy and Claire was one of them. She was apparently transported into an alternate space similar to the Sanctuary in Limworm and was attacked by an assailant from the cult. She easily defeated him because at this point in time, she has actually grown a lot in terms of overall strength, likely at the level of an average Shadow Garden numbers. Claire was then trying to find a way out but she was stopped by Jin, also known as Dark Smile, a named child of the cult, and despite learning to control Aurora's blood tentacle technique, she still lacked the power and control to fully utilize the ability so she was unable to defeat Dark Smile. Luckily Zeta soon appears to save Claire and teleported her out of the sanctuary and right into Sid's classroom which obviously embarrassed her. After their embarrassing ordeal, Claire was approached by Alexia and their first meeting was quite hostile because she was apparently angry at the princess for toying with Sid's heart. Good thing she doesn't know about Alexia and Sid's actual relationship. But back to the topic at hand, Claire told Alexia everything she knew and except for the part about her seeing and talking to Aurora, Alexia believed all her statements and having said that, they both agreed to work together to uncover the truth behind everything that was happening around their school. 
So they started their investigations by breaking into the Forbidden Library to acquire a book that revealed the history of the school and they discovered that the left arm of Diablos was hidden within the sanctuary. With their newly acquired information, they left the Forbidden Library only to be caught by the library director who revealed himself to be a member of the cult and had wanted to eliminate them. They fought against the director and his forces but because he had laced the surrounding air with muscle relaxing drugs, they succumbed to the effects and just before the director eliminated them, Shadow arrives to save them by easily defeating the director. And just before the director died, he told them everything he knew about the cow and the demon Diablos. So with that, Claire returned to her room while waiting for Alexia to deliver their findings to Iris and the Crimson Knight Order. But after failing to acquire help from the Knight Order, Claire and Alexia decided to use Claire's connection with Aurora to search for the left arm of Diablos. And just as they were about to start searching, the entire school was transported into the sanctuary but this time, they discovered bomb collars had been attached to their necks, draining their mana and will explode once their mana supply is empty. Now trying to make sense of the situation, Claire and Alexia started to investigate their surroundings and eventually met the other trapped students in the school hall. After coordinating and organizing the students, they decided to trace the mana flow of the bomb collars to disable the source. A group consisting of Claire, Alexia, Nina, Isaac, Christina Hope and Suzuki Hope who was actually seen in disguise were responsible for this mission. Eventually they found the source and after getting help from Aurora, they discovered an underground dungeon but it was a trap set by Isaac who was a member of the cult as well. Claire and Alexia would be captured and brought to meet Fenrir, the fifth seed in the cult because he needed their mana to finish the ritual to resurrect the demon Diablos. However, Claire and Alexia were able to break free from their bindings thanks to help from Aurora but despite their combined efforts against Fenrir, he eventually overwhelmed them when he transformed into his true form, the Midgar Devil. Even when Aurora briefly took over Claire's body, they were unable to fight back because Claire's mana reserves were running low. Luckily, she was saved by Suzuki who was revealed to be Shadow and as per usual, he utterly destroyed Fenrir with minimum effort and just before he left, he also helped to disable the machines powering the bomb colors. With that, the battle was over and their mission was a success, but Claire was still injured and they haven't located the exit. When Nina arrives, she quickly knocked them out again and took Claire into the depths of the sanctuary where Zeta and Victoria were waiting. Because if you didn't know, Zeta plans on resurrecting the Demon Diablos so that she can give Shadow immortality and when she discovered that Claire had become the host of Aurora, she thought it would be a great idea to transfer the other parts of Diablos into Claire and eventually turning her into a vessel for the demon's resurrection. That's why she needed to make sure Claire was safe and out of sight from the cow at least until she can carry out her plans. Having said that, Zeta carried out the ritual to infuse the left arm of Diablos into Claire and after it was completed, she was left in the care of Nina. So this is all we know about Claire so far and judging by the story's progression, she is pretty much destined to become the next Diablos and Sid will likely be the one to either save or end her, hopefully it's the former. I honestly feel bad for her, all she wants is to spend time with her brother and live a fairly normal life, instead she was given this power and unwillingly became the host of Aurora and targeted by Zeta and the cult as well. But regardless, I think Claire's character arc will be a major turning point for the series so we'll just have to wait for future volumes to find out what will happen to her. For now, what do you think of Claire Kagano as a character? Is she a contender for best waifu and is she the true protagonist of the series? And yeah, that was the character breakdown for Claire Kagano the Brocon and what are your own opinions on her character? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and who else would you like me to cover? Also if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, maybe consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell for more anime content in the future. As always, thanks for watching and stay safe everyone.